Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Xeno Gears. This is episode God, 16 or 17, I'm not even sure. I'm so fucking salty right now. Uh, oh, I, I, I started today so excited, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna record episodes of Xeno Gears, and I'm gonna, oh, fuck me, and I'm gonna do some streaming, which I'm doing, I'm streaming some, uh, Final Fantasy 15 later, which will be fun, which will also date the shit out of this video, which I'm about to do anyways. But I'm so happy, I'm so excited, I'm like, yeah, today's gonna be a good day. And then I get a text from my fucking wife, who's recently been promoted several times at her work, and is, um, in the process of basically being promoted to a semi-executive position. And so she's getting her own office and blah, 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 blah. And that's awesome. That's great. I feel really good for her. Uh, she's also starting work on her next degree here in the next couple of uh, weeks. And so, woohoo, this is good music. Cool things are happening. Look, we've got a sick new battleship to get around the world in. Um, but yeah, so everything's good. Everything's great for her. I'm super happy, super excited. And so I splurge a little bit. Uh, because she wants a nice laptop for fucking... She wants a nice laptop for going back to school so that she can, you know, carry around a super slim touch screen, blah, 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 blah. So I buy her this nice, super expensive, awesome laptop that I know she's going to love and she's going to be super happy about. Got her one of those insanely expensive, adaptive, stylus fucking things that honestly nobody in the world goddamn needs unless they're an artist, but whatever. Um... And so she had a big meeting down in down at her uh, work's headquarters today, uh, or yesterday she had it, and she, uh, oh, excuse me, um, oh shit, it's the graph. Anyways, so she had this big ass meeting yesterday, and she texts me this morning, and she's like, oh, oh, work's buying me this super expensive super high-end business laptop blah 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 so here I am with a fucking beautiful brand new laptop that I bought for my damn wife hiding under the bed it's right it's right over there I'm looking at it right now and she's getting a laptop from work now granted she can't use that for school stuff but you bet your ass when I give her that laptop, she's going to use that shit for work stuff. So, Merry fucking Christmas to me. Fuck. So, now I'm playing video games to get out all the frustration. Because, like, the sad thing is, like, one isn't necessarily better or worse. If, this, if the laptop I got her was markedly worse... Then I would just be like, okay, yeah, I'll return it and spend blah, blah, blah amount of dollars on something else and just let her know what's going on. And she'd probably be totally fine with that. But they're fucking comparable. Hers has the touchscreen. The one her fucking business is getting... Argh! Whatever. Look, we're about to fight this motherfucker who's on foot with three gears. Graph is like, this isn't part of the plan. So this motherfucker is... Uh, really strong. Look at this. Look at this fucking shit. This motherfucker can straight up murder gears. Look at that. Half. 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 And he gets to do it twice in one fucking turn. Oh, this is going as poorly as my Christmas plans, which I'm recording this on the 22nd coming out in, like, fucking February or some shit. So, you know, Merry Super Late Christmas to everybody watching this. I... Yeah. So look at how much damage we do to this guy. Fucking nothing. So the best thing we can do is try to survive. I'm 90% sure we can't actually beat him. I think we just have to survive. Also, he's just kicking us in the legs, and he's taking out, like, half our health. So let's keep healing up. Oh, shit, I did something wrong. Ah! There's a... Not specific way to go about doing this fight, but... 
there's a smart way to go about doing this fight. And it's put Ellie on booster. He hasn't hit her yet, so we're good. So, shit, but look at how much damage he's doing to, like, Rico. Fine, he'll sit there and suck up damage. Fuck it. Get him. Damn, he, like, guards that shit, too, without an animation. Guys, I'm so grump. Ah, fuck. I was so excited today was going to... I think I want to start drinking. Like, like hard liquor. Damn it. Oh, he fucking killed him! Oh, shit! Mm. I'm going to sit here and drink my fucking coffee. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Ooh, ooh. I feel like I should have healed Faye with that one turn back there, but I also feel like that wouldn't have done anything. Because, like, he only had, like, 600 more hit points to gain, so it would have been a net loss. Okay, that's worthless. Out of fuel? Oh, because I've been healing, so I guess he's burp, done heal. Oh, shit, we beat him. We fucked him up. Draw upon more of your power than. Oh shit! He was gonna fight us for real, but S Satan Doc is like, nah, fuck that. This is a funny animation. Apparently, we're holding on, but look, he just got rolled off. There he goes. There goes his. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Graf. You ain't shit. Just like my Christmas present to my wife has now been re rendered ain't shit. Damn it. He's slipping! He's slipping, he's slipping! He's slipping it! Giving it the big old slip! Look out! Master Saitan! I'm gonna just mispronounce this shit forever. I'm so fucking pissed off! If it's them, they are okay. Strange translation. So this part's cool. Kind of. I wish they would've let us do it, but... Look, Hammer's gonna, Hammer's gonna shoot this guy with his little, with his little super soaker carnival gun. It's gonna be great. You can do it. You can do it, weird sea otter dude, bro. Wow, you don't know how to fucking aim. Come on, hit him. Yeah, there you go. Come on, shoot him. Four, three, two, one, fire! He shot his ass when he was like right there and blew him the fuck away. Good. Blow away, just like my desire for a nice Christmas with. Ah! At least I've still got my daughter. My daughter got so many presents for Christmas. She got. Mm. Ah, delicious water. She's got, um, words I can't fucking think of. She's got so many presents. She's got like a billion Legos and... Oh, look at this. He's like, fuck it, they're dead. I'm here to be a badass. And then Rico kicks the shit out of him. Yeah, fuck you, Hammer. Piece of shit. We're gonna save real quick, because, uh... Yeah, we need to save. After that hard fight. No, come on. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna hit save once, and we're gonna save. There we go. Okay, cool. Trials and tribulations of trying to fucking save the game. The Let's Play. Alright, let's talk to people. What's up, Ellie? Yeah, he never aimed for you. Uh, let's talk to these two lovers. Ha 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 ha, I get it. Because he's all like, Rico! And Rico's like, No, Sundere! Sundere Orc Bro! Suplex! Suplex Dere. God, I'm an idiot. Shut up! Yeah, fuck you, Hammer! You ain't shit! Alright, what you got to say for yourself, Doc? I've got a bad feeling. What 
What do you mean it's not like him? Faye's only job in this fucking game so far, in almost 20 hours, has just been to brood. And follow the lead of other fucking people. That's all he's done. Like, looking back on this game and this character objectively, this guy's a fucking idiot. He's a bad, bad character. And I, I, I've said a million times, he does come into his own later, but shit. Oh, what is this? Someone knows we're here. It's Kislev's. So who is this? The Goriatu. They are gonna bomb Bladovic. <laughs> Either way, no need to let him go, so... Oh, hey, it's Bart! Hey, he's not dead! And the ship's... The ship's fine? The fuck? So this is kind of just explained away later. And it's... Really... Really annoying. So this is... This is like, yay, Bart's okay. God damn it. Sorry, just dealing with that laptop bullshit. If I have to return that fucking laptop. Mm, such a grump a dump. So once again, Bart is gonna fucking shoot at us. God damn it. Look, everybody's like, what the fuck are you doing, kid? What are you doing? Every time. Every time with this fucking shit. You think you would have learned? All your friends are dead. Apparently he needs permission for more than half from more than half of the crew to use a guided missile. Which is strange and stupid unless it's a nuclear weapon which like what the fuck so here it is and now it's now the Yggdrasil's just in the water and that that's not it wasn't able to do that before so what the fuck also look at this terrible model for a missile it's literally the only time you ever see it it's just a fucking polygon What's the matter? Okay. <laughs> I think they would be more worried about Gebler than Kislev or Ave. Because <laughs> Gebler's the only other one with the flying battleships. Oh! Oh, shit! Oh! We jinxed ourselves by saying, this thing's impregnatable. Wait. <laughs> oh, God. This thing's impregnable. God. Why, why, why did my, why did my brain mouth go there? Look at a hammer circling around like a fucking idiot in the back. Fuck you, hammer. You suck. <laughs> so one shot from that fucking thing is enough to take down... Like, the crux of Kislev's secret new undestroyable battleship. This is some titanic shit. We have no time for a debate. You have the skills, bro? You got these six skills? My APM is over 200, bro. Fucking fighting the Koreans in this StarCraft shit. <laughs> Hopefully y'all got the damn... Like, joke. The joke. I... Put, it, actions per minute. It's a... It's a re... Okay. I'm sorry. I'll stop making non-Xenogears jokes. Um... Um... 
Rico is green. <laughs> God damn it. Oh well. <laughs> so Dan gets a beat on it the moment everybody's like bailing out. Seriously, you need to rethink your method of disciplining. This is like take a bat to his fucking spine after pulling this shit. This is the, that, like, seriously, that's the most juvenile, poor thing he could have possibly done. And look at how happy he is. I'm like, I didn't listen to any of the people who are supposed to tell me how to do this shit. Look at how awesome I am. I got such a huge penis. But I'm in a Japanese story, so I don't really ever get to use it. So the thing, it, the thing's like crashing into the Yggdrasil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is what you get, you fucking idiot. Way to think it through. Oh. Look at that splash in the water. Shit looks dire. Oh. Giant explosion. So apparently the Yggdrasil is fine. And now everybody's dead. That's the end of the game. Good fucking job, Bart, you stupid fucking idiot. And I was beginning to like you as a character again. Idiot. Stupid. In the Lahan region, the Northeast Ocean. From the wave pattern, it's definitely a gatekeeper. There are no regular mainland flights. Could it be Chevette's Eiffel Aura? The mass is different. It's much smaller. So this is interesting. If you remember, right at the beginning of the Kislev thing, those weird masked people were dropping off a giant fucking thing um, to Kislev. And what that was, was a gatekeeper, which is basically an engine that allows interdimensional travel, uh, which is how... Uh, Solaris stays hidden from the rest of the world because they're basically in a different dimension on the same plane of existence. Um, oh shit, it's a graph! And he's just there. Um, and they, they, the first thing they did was load that into the Goliath, which is interesting because it basically means that Chevette had, or not Chevette, excuse me, that Ave would have no way to fight that thing because if they started attacking the Goliath, the Goliath could just go to the other plane and then just jump between planes and, and fuck up Ave, which is crazy. Graf is here manipulating shit. The one who caused you so much pain and grief. Your brother who gave you nuggies. That's not actually true. I'm being a bastard. Nobody's brother is... Re nobody's related to anybody here. Whatever. Um... Or attacking me against shit. And I'm being serious. <laughs> Damn, that that uh, that manipulation was easy, huh? You're just like the person who gave you a purple nurple once is on that ship, and he's like, "Son of a bitch!" But anyway, so they had the gatekeeper, and so that big explosion that made them disappear was actually the gatekeeper causing a jump <laughs> from the from the the fucking impact. Oh shit! Graf has got problems with Miang. Miang, whatever. Shut up! Fuck off! I'm angry about stuff. And now they're talking way over our fucking heads. Way over our heads. Which is fine. And they're talking about somebody being the very meaning of somebody else's existence, and you can kind of imagine who the fuck that is. Or for yourself. So they're just hanging out in their ship there in Ave, and now they're like, now they're they're going they're going nuts. They're going nuts. Okay, we got it. We got it. The animation is very slow. Yes, you ha you can only move one axis at a time. That's fine. So. Solaris is clearly incredibly technologically advanced. 
and there's clearly somebody who maybe isn't necessarily trying to fight that power, but is trying to give the opposition some sort of a clear, like, level playing field. Because somebody gave a gatekeeper to... That's hilarious. Not Ignis. Not Chevette. Uh, Kisla! Fuck! Fuck me. Goddamn. Why? Shit. God! My head is not in the right place today. To, to, to your... To your chagrin. Ah, whatever. You can recover the anima relics anytime. Moreover, we learn. So we get we're seeing these people a lot more, so what they're doing is is becoming a lot more relevant to the plot. And we're gonna learn more about that in probably within another 20 hours. <laughs> this is we're coming up on 20 hours of gameplay here. This is either the 16th or 17th hour. Wait, the 17th or 18th hour. By the end of this, we'll either have 17 or 18. Why can't I remember which fucking episode this is? It's been so long. Whatever. Anyways. Ugh. Scratch my head. That feels good. The subject of the M project. So clearly they're talking about Faye. And clearly they're talking about his companions and his most recent companion is part of a project they were either attracted to him or it's developing into the same condition as 500 years ago the fuck happened 500 years ago which also was the beginning of of memorable history in this world in terms of like what regular people on the surface remember and apparently something big happened <laughs> either way well it's it'll all get explained later but they're setting up a lot of cool like story threads that'll all get tied together later but at this point it's just threads all over the place and it's a big fucking mess but eventually it'll get woven into a wonderful and interesting tapestry So this is the first mention of nanotechnology and Zeboim, um, which will become important later. Kept it secret. Is this acceptable? It will do for now. That coincides when the time with the time when the Earth shifted. So basically, there's some ancient civilization in the area that we just blew up. Technology doesn't seem that crucial. The ability to do as he wishes is questionable. So, they're talking about um, a character who will become integral to the plot later as an antagonist. Um, but we could talk about that later. And now he's giving them shit for not being able to blow up Faye. And they're like, oh, we're, 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 we're. I don't know what that means. Yeah, of course it wouldn't be eliminated so easily. It's the player character. <laughs> yeah, no shit the purge will never happen again. You blew up all your giant nuclear bomb ships. But these guys are clearly terrified of Faye. And his little party that's that's coming up all around him. The shit they're saying, Anan Elbe. I think he's talking to the other computer ball person. These people, oh, they're speaking in riddles and it's super annoying. So, like, clearly these guys, like those guys in the, the weird TV ball, are supposed to be, apparently they're also gods. They're supposed to look old, and the art shows that they're old, but it doesn't show how old they're supposed to be. Um, and they're old. I won't tell you how old now, because that will actually give a lot away. But they're pretty 
pretty fucking old. Hmm, nose itch. So this looks, uh... This looks dire, yeah? Shit. So this is just a piece of the Goliath. Uh, something happening here. Whoa! Who's in there? It's Faye! There's less than two days worth. Uh-oh. Of what? Of porn! Oh, well, food. <laughs> Faye is wildly trying to avoid the fact that everyone's probably dead again. <laughs> They're okay. Doc, Rico, Hammer, everyone. They're all gonna be okay. Like, he's losing it. Well, he's not losing it. He, he never had it in the first fucking place, but he's clearly like, yeah. Hey! They're okay! Faye was right. He doesn't know that. But look at this. We're inside of the fucking Yggdrasil. Which wasn't that ripped in half and thrown to the bottom of quicksand and blah 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 blah. <laughs> Explain yourself, video game. What the fuck? Oh. So, I brought up at the beginning of Kislev that they introduced Kislev um, as it, like, they, they introduce it almost completely separate from the rest of anything, right? Like, like you just show up and you wake up there and it has no relation to the larger plot until now when it's kind of very abruptly and unceremoniously tied to the rest of the... Uh, the rest of the plot. Because basically, Bart gets fucked up, Faye blacks out, Faye wakes up in a prison on the other side of the fucking continent, right? And then has to deal with this kiss love situation. Then Doc shows up and everything like that, and that's all cool. But like... <clears throat> excuse me. Like, the abruptness with which kiss love is introduced, I really like, but the abruptness in which... Bart and the Yggdrasil and all these guys are reintroduced I feel is is very I don't know what chronic lumbago is and I don't want to google it um I don't even think that's a real thing anyways I really don't like the abruptness with which it's like oh hey Bart and fucking Bart again right um and they're gonna give a little bit of explanation but I feel like Perhaps in the in the the writing of the story, they couldn't come up with a better way to do it. And granted, like they explain how the Drusilla is fine and so on and so forth here. And it is kind of neat. It's kind of neat and kind of funny how it's just like, oh, here we are again. We think we're okay or we're in one situation, and then Bart comes and fucking blows us up again. And he's <laughs> he's apologizing profusely to this six foot seven, four hundred pound muscle. <laughs> uh. But like, it's just so abrupt. Like, like getting back to it's like, okay, we did the kiss love thing, that was fine. Now we're back, just right back to where we were and doing stuff. And dealing with the fallout of the shit that happened before Kiss Love. <laughs> no, don't blame the ship's crew. Mm, excuse me. It was fucking Bart. It was Bart. Bart blew us up. Bart killed the shit out of us. Bart was like, fuck those people in there. I'm not even going to talk to them. I'll just fucking just blow them up. Kill them. And you call them slow? You're apologizing, and you're like, I'm sorry I blew you up, you retard. 
But Link is so good at blowing you up, though. I'm 18. I'm a fucking mouth-breathing idiot. God. God. Yes. Rico, beat the shit out of him. Your reaction is 100% justifiable. I would probably break his fucking teeth. Now back to these poor bastards. <laughs> God damn. Oh, horrible back pain. Not really. I'm just, I don't have the lumbar support in my chair like I normally do, which kind of sucks. So our gears are with us, which, you know, that's cool. Of course they're useless. They're sitting there rusting in salt water. This part's kind of funny. Well, what Faye's doing is, this is kind of a really dire fucking situation. Because they're stuck floating on the open ocean with no food. And he's trying to catch a fish. This is funny. The fish is taunting him. There's the little bastard! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's pretty good. Uh, this is slightly therapeutic. I don't have to think about the fact that I have a... a, a expensive dud of a gift for... We're gonna die! Yeah, he caught the fish. Shut up, Ellie. I'm not gonna eat that. I'm get, I'll get sick. I'm an Ellie. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> this part's funny. Did the fish get away? Also, like, I guess it's fine. I guess the storytelling's fine. But I think it's a little convenient that now the main male protagonist and the main female protagonist... Oh shit, what's a big donut in the sky? The main male protagonist and main female protagonist are now isolated alone in a, in a, 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 a desperate situation together. Whatever. So we're seeing a big giant thing. Oh shit, she just straight up says, oh yeah, that's Chevette. So we'll learn more about it later, but Chevette is really interesting. Because also it sounds like Faye is from there. But Chevette's really interesting uh, for reasons that will be explained. God, I, I want to talk about it now, but I'm not going to talk about it. It's a country outside the reach of Solaris. Well, there's one reason it's incredibly interesting. And, okay, there's the other reason. I can't talk about it. So, Chevette uses an interdimensional barrier, like Solaris, to basically isolate itself and be unreachable. Um, which is a big fucking deal. And, yes, it is a country. Um, it's like this, the scale of that thing is actually gigantic and massive. But, like... Here's, here's another country with super advanced technology, that but instead of being Solaris and trying to control the world, it's just kind of hanging out. It's almost like they're stuck there. It looks like a UFO. It's actually pretty cool. Uh-oh, and we're looking up there, and we look back down, and what do we got? Oh, hey, it's the Yggdrasil, and it's Bart. Yeah, you probably fucking deserve to get the shit beat out of you, kid. Yeah, they weren't a good idea, idiot. You probably killed them. Oh yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's prop. That's a big fucking deal. He probably killed them. Yes, this is what they call the sea. Now he's got to go apologize, apologize. It's Faye and Satan. All right. So this is where we get the little explanation about how the ship is even fucking here right now. God, I, I'm swearing a lot today. I'm sorry, guys. I'm probably swearing a lot more than I usually do. Yes, I should apologize to the two of them. I want to make sure I get the dialogue where we talk about how the ship is here. Um, 
so that you guys can see how brushed off it is and how like coincidental it is that any of this exists right now. I gotta, I gotta find these people and talk to them. Also, now that I'm Bart, I get different dialogue from these people. It's gotten bigger. <laughs> right now it's taller than you, young master. I've learned my lesson. Oh yeah, he, there's there's teeny little little flavored subplots around in here that have nothing to do with anything. Uh, I'm going the wrong way. Damn it. Let's go over here and talk to Maison. Holy shit! Why did you no, no, shut up! Stop screaming! Well, he's screaming at me and he totally fucking deserves it. <laughs> he puts his name on a missile and starts shooting down aircraft? The fuck is wrong with you? Your dad is rolling over in his grave. That's funny. On their way toward the gear hangar. Yay! So that gives us information. I actually like that. Because it's his job to discipline the shit out of this kid and this little asshole kid. This little asshole kid just fucking takes his giant cruise missile and just shoots down big ass aircraft. Hey look! It's the Doc Saiten. Satan. Whatever. There is no consistency to this. There's no consistency to me, especially today. Gosh. Do you want to talk to me? I'm really sorry. No, it could be helped. None of this, whatever that translates to in Japanese, there's like a saying that's it can't be helped, but like, it could very, very easily could have been helped. Keep calm and judge carefully. Yeah, no shit he says the same thing. Because he's an adult who has a little bit of common sense and is a brash, testosterone-filled, one-eyed idiot. Like you, idiot. You're stupid. <laughs> okay, here's the explanation. It's the same type as the Yggdrasil. So this is not the Yggdrasil. It was scrapped because the peace talks with Kislev made progress. So this thing existed somewhere, so they just had a backup. So, this is much more interesting. Whose crest is it? Shavat! So, there's an, a very interesting bit of backstory. Because what it means is that back when the war was going on, Chevette was actually interfering and helping Ave, specifically Bart's dad, the king, build warships. Um, and there's, there's plot significance to that later, beyond what I'm going to talk about now. But, basically... Chevette was trying to help at least one side of this this 500 year conflict win the war like 10 15 years ago and the moment that happened well not the moment that happened but probably because of that is the reason that Solaris came in and helped with a coup d'etat um, helped with Shikan's coup d'etat, killing the royal family, which has plot significance I won't talk about now, but we'll talk about later. Um, and then started helping balance the war instead of providing these ultra-powerful warships to one side. <laughs> so now it's time to go get our ass handed to us by, uh, what's his ass again? Anyways, let's go. What do you have to say to me? So hey, Maitreya made it out of that one fight, the last fight with uh, Faye and 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 uh, Vanderkam, but his lieutenant boys are gone. What you got to say? Thank you for letting me ride on your Yggdrasil. I've always wanted to ride it. It's okay. The children are safe in Nason's care. So this is interesting that there, there's like civilians manning shops and shit on the Yggdrasil now because like half of Bart's crew fucking died in that fight. Grab a couple of these. Let's see. Okay, there's ammo here, which is a bit of foreshadowing that we don't need yet. Also, for some reason, I can tune up... Mm, excuse me. 
Also, for some reason, I can actually tune up um, the gears that we don't have with us right now, which is um, incredibly dissonant. 15 output, 2,000 fuel, so obviously we want to put the best one in. Look, we can even do Virge. Alright. We're going to put some ether armor. Um, that's a really good boost to hit points. Throw the better engine in. There's a reason I'm doing this now. Alright. So the armor value, it's a... It's a it's a 20% increase, but you lose out on that that 50 ether armor. Um, and I'm probably going to put the ether armor on most of... Hey, he's already fully upgraded. I'm probably going to put the ether armor on most of these gears. Um, which is a bit of foreshadowing because we're going to be dealing with... Um, excuse me. We're going to be dealing with gears that are... Or that use a lot of... Ether is coming up, which is why we're doing that. Hey, look, we can even upgrade Steer, who already has the Ether armor. And his armor was really good. You could see that his armor was really good. Also, there's, there's, like, this is the wrong time for this to be in the damn, in the, the inventory, but there's, there's parts for a new gear we don't know anything about yet. 13 outputs. Fuel versus 20. There we go. Alright, so we got the shit we need right now. Spent some money on gears. Oh, also, from all that grinding I did back in... Uh, uh, back in Kislev, I don't really have that much uh, money. Alright, now I'm looking... This will be the first time we go over on the other side of the hangar bay. I'm looking for a specific gear. I'm take the camera around this way. God, this is a cool game. I really like this game. Oh, hey, look, it's Steer. Or Stier. S T E I R. Steyr. Is it I E R or E I R? I'm going to have to look at that. <laughs> it's like, fuck you, kid. I thought I dealt with you a while ago. I thought I suplexed you enough, you fucking shit kid! That's good, he's kind of forgiven him. More concerned about those two gears there. Who the hell are you? So he's impressed by how sick these gears are. He thought Faye was the only other badass. So he's clearly got some respect for Faye and his ability, which is cool, but now he also has Respect for for Bart's crew's ability to maintain their gears. This is a really interesting this uh, this is a really interesting turn for Rico. I, I wouldn't have expected him to act this way. Um, which granted it's convenient for the plot because he's a party member, you want him in the fucking party. But like, yeah. I guess it's alright. Cool. So we've made our amends with some of the people we we tried to murder. Some of them. And here's the melodramatic uh, uh, character bonding uh, dumb children moment. Which is, uh, you know. Let's talk about feelings. That's Faye talking, and yeah, no shit you've just been drifting around. You helped Bart when he needed it. It's interesting that this is the theme that's being played right now. Because um, it's... Like you should probably expect it, but it's a love theme, but whatever. I'm not really trying to help. I just want to feel good. I want people to need me. As a self-realized 31-year-old man, I, like, 
couldn't relate less to these problems anymore. I probably did at one point in my life, but like... Shut up, kid. Stop feeling bad about yourself. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. This is... This has to be, hands down, the worst episode. Just period. And it's my fault. God, I'm acting like, like I've been drinking, not been drinking, blah, 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 whatever. We're stranded out in the ocean. I'm sorry, it's my fault. Come on, sort this shit out so you can get back to doing what you need to do in the world. Actually, this is... I mean, I don't like it. I think it's dumb. But it's good. It's This is a good character and relationship building moment. Even though it's just an almost black screen of the ocean and text. I'm sorry. Yeah, no shit you don't want to be there. Bunch of chauvinistic assholes who only respect you because you can kick their ass. Part of a military that's just like, let's bomb these giant cities for, for to kill literally one person. Which, granted, she didn't know that was the case. She just got the order and was like, oh, I guess I have to do this. No one does know what you did. Eh, she makes a good point. It makes point is when the story was written, because, you know, it wasn't written when police and surveillance states were common. Like, if I did something like that when I was in the military, like, motherfuckers would know six seconds before I did it, somehow using... Machines running on Pentium 1s. Actually, when I was in, I worked on a, uh, I worked on a location tracking system that would basically keep track of the GPS coordinates of troops and troop transports down to, like, the foot. Um, and that's about all I can actually say about that without, uh, getting arrested. He's throwing up! That's what that noise is. Is literally him throwing up. It's not him angry, it's him going. Ah, <laughs> 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 that's funny, you're funny. Ah. Unless we do something, we're gonna die. I guess you know not to catch that kind of fish anymore. Actually, a big piece of debris floating out in the open ocean like this would attract a ton of edible fish, so. If they have fuel to cook this shit with, they'd probably be fine. Hell, they'd probably be fine without fuel to cook this shit. Their big problem would be water, actually. But here we go, more... More helping each other, blah blah blah. Don't complain about the E-ration, you idiot! Ellie's like, here, you can survive with this. And he's like, I don't make something. I'm fucking a child. Yeah. Oh, that didn't come out. Oh, let's just strike that from the record, shall we? So they're being nice to each other. Yay, how nice. Why would you force yourself to eat things to certain would have been better not to share it. This is so... <laughs> this is bizarre and baffling. Like, she's sitting there like, I want to survive. It would have been better for me to kill you and eat you, but I gave you my food to make me feel good. How is it selfish? It's not so... Whatever. <laughs> okay. 
My thoughts on this little sequence here are going between, like, baffled at the stupidity and enjoying the nice, warm character development moment. Whatever. It's fine. It's awkward-ass teenagers being awkward to each other. Also, she's 18, and she's in charge. Mm, whatever. Should probably stop picking apart the story. It's probably very off-putting. If it's off-putting, let me know in the comments, and I'll fucking stop. It'll take a couple months, based on my recording schedule, but I'll stop, I swear. A big ass three ton door, and she's just like, BAM! Punch! Look at that! What is it? Oh shit! It's one of the most simultaneously amusing and interesting and frustrating spots in the game. Woohoo! I'm actually super fucking happy that we're finally here. This part's fun, this part's funny. I'm probably gonna talk to all the NPCs here because of how unique they are in the world so far. Also, that's the thing Faye and Ellie are on. Let's see, can you see their stupid little sprites? You totally can! That's awesome! I love their little seven pixel sprites there. And we're just here. I was so surprised there are people living afloat on the vast sea. This place is so fucking cool and so different from the rest of this game. So, we don't find out from like map placement where we are until way later, but we are at basically on the other end of the earth at this point. Between flying and drifting and that gate basically randomly teleporting us somewhere else on the planet. We are in a different place on the planet. Like, the exact opposite end of where we were before. Well, almost the exact opposite end. You'll see what I mean in a couple hours. Not this episode. What about our gears? So we are on the Thames. Which is a giant ship and we're gonna learn its deal soon we're gonna fix our gears they're so nice and yes that is it is strange captain's orders that makes sense captain's kind this this whole part like the rest of this episode and the next episode are gonna be awesome and then there's gonna be more melodrama that nah, melodrama but whatever All right, let's look around the ship. This is yes! Happy we're here. I feel like I've seen that guy somewhere before. Let's talk to this kid. He is so cool, I want to grow up to be just like him. Look at this shit. Oh! Oh! Oh, he fucked it up. He was supposed to look at the camera. We'll get context for that later, yeah! Yeah, you do need more practice. Alright, let's talk to these weird battler bros with their vests. Yeah, I am so hot. It's so hot. That's all you fuckers have to say? What about you? You look crazy. Rare finds from the sea bottom. Alright, so good shit for people. Really good. Ooh, she's got a really good piece of equipment she can get there. We're gonna grab three of those. Alright, we're spending a lot of money here, but that's okay. And I have stuff I can sell. First, let's equip this stuff on here. Night Mail and Night Helm. So, where was it? it? Should be down at the bottom. Penguin Coat. Uh, which I think is supposed to be... I don't know. I don't know what it's supposed to be. Alright, let's put her in a pretty dress. 
that increases the shit out of her defense. She got super low defense earlier. Alright, throw the martial rod on there. She does not do new she is an objectively worse character than Faye. Except for her ether. Her ether attack is 42, Faye's is 30. And Faye is supposed to be kind of an all-rounder character, so that gives you an idea how strong she is in terms of ether. Ether stone, patient ring. Alright, we good, homie. I don't know who the homie is in this situation. Let's talk to these asshole kids. What's up, kids? The brick brothers, we old rim. He's got a heights pathetic. Just calm down. My little sister pushed me. She always picks on me. I'm so scared. Oh my god. Unacceptable conditions. Hey, look at this thing. Hey, you've got your eyes on something good. Damn, you know what this is? Whoa! Is what it is. Pretty cool, huh? Hey, wait a minute. This isn't for sale. What about this thing? Can I buy this? What is this? Hey, I'm damn sure you like this. This is... <laughs> it's a propeller, is what it is. And it's just great. I love these idiots here. So why you got all this shit if you ain't gonna sell it all, huh? What about this? They have good taste. Damn. Damn! Oh, it's a stoplight. Is what it is. Isn't this just bad? So this is stuff they pulled up from the bottom of the ocean. Uh, and there is totally plot significance to this. I'm not just here wasting y'all's time. But you'll learn this shit later. <laughs> Everybody's like, damn. And this guy's like, damn! You dumb old man! All you make is useless crap. Why don't you make something that'll sell? He didn't actually make those. He found that shit. Um, the, the mistranslation. I know for a fact. Whatever. No way you could ever understand the soul and romance of a Thames man. The soul of a Thames man? They were all as dumb as you. The Thames have gone under long ago. They're, they're kind of all as dumb as him. <laughs> Alright, what do you have for sale? Go talk to my stupid son. <laughs> oh, this is great. I'm having fun. I'm having a good time. What do we got? What do we got? Okay, you sell some stuff. Alright. This shit's really good. Because it removes all status effects. Wind up, earth down. So these are... Special situational buff items. Um, I'm rarely ever going to use them. I'm going to buy some of those later, but not now. And these are super good because they just straight up block the status effects. The problem is that you can't use them outside of combat. You have to use them in combat. So you have to waste a turn. Which, in some cases, is useful. Not for us, though. Let's see. Actually sell... Let's see, where's the stuff? i will sell a couple of these gold nuggets. There we go, I've sold some gold nuggets. And the game fucking froze. Wait, did it freeze? No, it didn't freeze. Woo! Thank God. I, cause like, I had shit. Kind of freaked out a bit there. Alright, fangs we can totally sell. I don't need fangs for shit. Uh, I'm keeping those. I'm gonna keep the bullion just in case I need it for something. <laughs> Look at all the hob jerky I have. The hob meat sells for a lot. The hob jerky does not. We'll keep 20 of that. Alright, we'll get rid of this. I ain't using that much of it. We'll keep like 30 on us. Making a little bit of money here. We can sell the eyeballs. We can sell the scales. I'm not selling the drive. Oh, shit! I gotta talk about drive! That's what I'm doing for the rest of the episode. Okay, so if y'all remember from, like, probably seven or eight parts ago at this point, um, Ellie and her merry crew of shitty lieutenants or shitty enlisted worker b-boys use drive. Oh shit, Faye has no health. I should, uh, I should take care of that. Um, and it was a drug. It made him go crazy and shit. Uh, it was real bad for Ellie. Right? Um, but it was a fucking drug. And so, um, we learned through story that drive is bad. But, then they drop drive. They drop drive, an item, into your fucking inventory, and you get a ton of it later. 
and there is zero downside to using it. Which is fine, but it's dissonant with the story aspect of it. So this hit point drive permanently increases maximum hit points by 20. So I'm gonna take this- Faye's gonna take this shit. And now his- now his health is 20 more. He's at 369. Ha ah, 69. Um... And so, it is an absolutely beneficial item to use with no downside. Which, the story was like, Nah, bro, you take that and you lose your fucking brain. What's up with these guys? So that's stupid, that's a weird thing, but hey, it's it's like the... It's like the stuff from Chrono Trigger that you could get. Uh, that permanently increases stuff. Every game has something like that. It's called Source in Final Fantasy VII, it's Drive Here, whatever. Let's talk to this drunk. Queenie is so beautiful. I'm gonna assume Queenie is the scantily clad chick above them. Queenie is so strong. Let's talk to Queenie. Oh, the next episode's gonna be a minigame episode. Wow, you suck! <laughs> You're right. You should come back when you've gotten a little better. You better practice somewhere other than the Thames. What, you don't know what I'm talking about? Ha! I know you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I know what he's- what she's talking about. Y'all don't know what she's talking about. Ah! Huh. Alright, so we- we fucked around here, and that's gonna be the end of the episode today. Uh, just fucking around in this little shop area of the Thames. So thanks to everybody who came out and enjoyed- hopefully enjoyed this honestly fucking terrible episode of Xenogears. I apologize profusely, it'll probably never happen again, it'll probably happen every episode, or every other episode, whatever. Um, if you enjoyed it, and you're not subscribed, you should subscribe so that you get notifications when more episodes come out. You should check out our other videos. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming out, you guys. I appreciate you all, platonically, and non-financially. I'm not, I'm not giving you money. No, I'm just I'm kidding. Whatever. Anyways, bye guys. Thanks again.